So now we move from engineering to architecture, and it's a pleasure to introduce Professor Alan Short, who's going to talk about sustainable hospital design. Alan. Thank you. The, uh, well, I'm going to report on two projects, um, uh, one funded by the EPSRC, where we're looking at the NHS retained estate, and an NIHR funded project, where we look at um, uh, brand, brand new hospitals. Uh, and uh, the aim of the project is, to, um, as it says, is, is to design and delivery of safe and economical adaptation strategies for NHS acute hospitals. We're interested in the future of the estate as the climate changes, and we're particularly interested in summertime overheating. And of course, we remember the heat waves of 2003 and the slightly less of a no less damaging heat wave of 2006. And as we work through the project, uh, we're interested in what resilience really means. The state is absolutely gigantic, so it seems to be an impossible task, but there are many recurring building types uh, within it. Uh, so in fact, if you get a handle on six or seven types of building, you get a good insight into what's happening. And then we've, we've measured a lot of data, taken a lot of data inside existing hospitals. In fact, we have the biggest um, database for non-domestic buildings that's been attempted since the 80s. We've modeled the buildings to see if we can recreate the actual conditions. And then we've, we've, we've modeled them against the predictive climate uh, databases to see what will happen as we go through the, through the century. But the exciting bit is that um, out of that, we produce a diagnosis of the buildings, and then we invent uh, ad adaptive strategies for re-engineering them. We try to keep that as cheap as possible and to use uh, normal construction practice, and we've costed them all. Uh, so we have a sort of an emerging plan for the estate, and here are 330-odd hospitals in the UK, and our colleague project, Biopic, uh, uh, map of, the, uh, uh, of the, 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 the relative change in uh, heat wave hazard. You see the southwest is um, uh, you're going to experience the most marked change, but the major conurbations are in, the, are, in, are in the second category there, and most of the hospitals are in those. So we spent quite a bit of time establishing the types. We've got a tip-off from the Director of States of the Department of Health, and uh, uh, we're, we're very interested in the pre, we're particularly interested in the, in the pre-1939 buildings for reasons that will emerge in the next few, few minutes. Um, and then the wave of hospital building in the 60s, which produced uh, towers, this uh, delightfully termed matchbox and a muffin type, and uh, beat plan buildings, crisscross grid buildings, and, uh, and the Best Buy buildings. And uh, once one's got a handle on those, one knows a lot about the performance of the estate. The first project we looked at is the maternity wing at Northwick Park Hospital. This is a very famous building if you're an architect, because architects were, thought this would be very innovative. It's a bizarre combination of a very heavy building that's also very glassy as well. Uh, and, that, uh, and it's a very problematic building, it was anyway. Um, and um, uh, this is a sort of uh, a diagnostic uh, diagram, summary diagram we produced of the many different factors that make this building overheat or made it overheat dramatically uh, in the summer. Um, and in fact, the, uh, this is uh, some, some of the output, slightly scrambled on the PC, but um, there, there are various uh, comfort standards possible, none of them very satisfactory at all. One is, is that they shouldn't be above 28 degrees centigrade for 150 hours a year, and this shows this maternity hospital uh, modeled into the future by 2020, an awful lot of the figures are, are becoming uh, red, uh, and the building goes off the rails as it goes through the century. There, is, there are a number of ways of rebuilding it. Most interesting is to put a new envelope over the existing building within which you can uh, drive air, uh, ventilation air, and shade the building from the direct solar gains. You, in this one, you can drive it with a machine, or, or you can drive it naturally using the, the, the natural stack effect. And uh, uh, in fact, you can improve the performance of the building quite markedly, but after 2050, you still have a problem. And it could be rebuilt into something like this. This is a building that we've all had a hand in that's, that's nearly finished in Beijing, which, which is a hybrid building, part naturally, part mechanically, uh, cooled and ventilated um, with a deep facade. This is the, uh, I'm sure very familiar to you, is the tower, ward tower at Adam Brooks uh, Hospital. We have uh, made a complete 3, 3D model of, um, of the Adam Brooks campus. And uh, this is, uh, we think, uh, having looked at Google Earth, right, my colleagues, that... Um, there are a good hundred of buildings like this across the NHS estate. Um, we've, uh, all our findings are um, captured in the film, which has just been put up on the university streaming media site. We're showing it outside in the foyer, but the web, the web address is uh, uh, on the handouts by it. Please do look at it. Uh, it's, uh, it's quick, and it summarizes all of the findings. The, uh, this is a more sophisticated method of, of determining 
uh, likely comfort, it's the adaptive comfort model, which, which says that uh, if you've experienced increasingly warmer conditions for a few days, then you might be more tolerant to warmer conditions. The Addenbrooke's Ward Tower uh, it actually re performs reasonably well at the moment only because it leaks like a sieve. Uh, as soon as you pump air into it, it, it rushes out everywhere, and this manages to stabilize it. But of course, in the future, this is not a great strategy. So you see that in 2005, the, uh, uh, it's got a sort of remarkably uh, small number of hours over uh, 28 degrees, but this starts to go up. However, in hot years, more likely years, you see that it starts to go off the rails pretty dramatically. Um, so the question is, what can one do about it? Well, we've developed five different options from this. We've gone in each case, for each building, from what the construction industry would do now, which is to completely seal up the building, lock all the windows up, put very efficient heat exchanger on the roof, pump air in, pump air out. That delivers a fantastically good performance in the winter, but does nothing for summertime overheating, and that becomes more and more difficult as you get through. This is our little diagram of uh, of, the, uh, of this, this first industry option, to achieves something like 59 gigajoules per 100 cubic meters. The, the, the NHS uses a very kind of Victorian way of measuring its, uh, its, its energy input. Um, that uh, fits reasonably well uh, within the target that the Department of Health has set the NHS. Sun shading, the intermediate options, is fantastically important for this building because it was built facing south to, to enjoy the views, but the sun shading was left out of the original design. But the most interesting options are, uh, are the later ones, where, um, where we are using, uh, we're driving air through the building naturally. And here we're putting stacks onto the existing building, we're making a deep facade, we're shading the glazing, and we can achieve remarkably low uh, energy and carbon uh, uh, figures for the building better than the, than the targets for a new build building. And this is, um, we made a model of this, and you can see this in the film, described in a lot more detail. And this shows the order of magnitude improvement that one can get through an inventive re-engineering of the building. That's to say, not using any renewable energy devices, no gadgets at all. This is a re-engineering of the building in terms of the stuff of, of, of the construction. And uh, you see an order of magnitude uh, change in the performance of the buildings. Option four and five at the end are the, are the, are the naturally conditioned uh, versions. And the costs are very interesting uh, because they are vary between 900 and 12, 1300 pounds a meter. That's rather less than the NHS is accustomed to spending on its refurbishments, which at the moment simply replicate what was there at the beginning. And the Director of Estates and uh, uh, Estates uh, Management Policy view is that this is entirely affordable, and if you rolled in the backlog maintenance um, on which he spends five billion a year, uh, you could launch a major uh, adaptive re-engineering program across the NHS within, within trust targets. We're also, as I said, very interested in older buildings, and all of these are scheduled for demolition, as far as we can see, uh, because they don't conform to the uh, care model that's, uh, that's required at the moment, the privacy and dignity problems in, a, in the communal ward. Um, this is, the, uh, this is one of the Nitrogen uh, wards at the Bradford Royal Infirmary, it's a still from our film. But the irony is that they are fantastically resilient and that Florence Nightingale's very detailed specification for these hospitals in Notes and Hospitals uh, works a treat. They have a, the, the opening areas and the windows are just in the right place, a very high ceiling, 16-foot ceilings, just the right width to cross-ventilate, and they're oriented in a sensible way. And this is some of the data that we've, that we've measured in this building, which shows it uh, you know, uh, persevering through quite a, a warm summer. Very difficult to get the interior temperature above 26 degrees. And we have, there's an historical line to our work. We're very interested in, uh, in, 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 in public buildings, particularly hospitals in the late Victorian era and the Edwardian era before the widespread adoption of air, air conditioning. And this is one of um, Billings' designs for the Johns Hopkins Hospital uh, in Baltimore, which are fantastically clever. And uh, they're all demolished, of course. We've, we've made 3D models of three of the types, including some of the unsuccessful competition entries, and we are busy modeling these to see if the very ambitious claims for avoiding cross-infection in the buildings uh, pass muster, and they, and they do. The airflow regimes that, uh, that Billings could create in his building were very effective. So back to the Nightingale. Here, here is the Nightingale with very minimal uh, adaptive re-engineering. Re we've got the windows opening much more as Florence Nightingale intended, have window guards, stop people becoming injured at the windows. 
uh, and we have we put ceiling fans on, which have which are immensely effective actually in terms of reducing the perceived effect of summertime temperatures. And then we know very well that this tear model is, is inappropriate. So uh, here, here is the Florence Nightingale's original pattern, and here are various ways in which one might start to subdivide, reorganize the Nightingale ward uh, to conform a bit more with the modernization gender of the NHS. The most interesting one is the zigzag, where we're still in a big, a big open space, but uh, we showed this to the cabinet office and they got very enthusiastic. They thought this was sort of business class NHS. And um, this is a detailed diagram of it. And so we spent quite a lot of time uh, lo looking at this, and I'm hoping very much I've been put uh, I'm the assessor for a new uh, Department of Health uh, Energy Efficiency Fund. We're going to try and hand out 50 million pounds tomorrow that Bradford have bid to, 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 to do this. And uh, here's some of this uh, fairly conventional fluid dynamics analysis of these buildings, but with the refinement that one is looking at uh, how uh, airborne pathogens move around. And this is the dwell time, so red is bad and blue is good and you can see that the, you, you have to tweak the different uh, options quite a lot and then very quickly not to dwell on this this is the Rosie Maternity Hospital which is another type sort of medium-rise three-story three pancake of building with courtyards in it could go on forever this is a sort of diagnostic of it and very uh, now very recognizable problems for the building it's not least solar gains and many many options for rebuilding it um, from the industry standard thing where you completely seal the building up and you pump air through it to uh, more interesting options where you, sh you shade all the glazing and uh, you roof over the courtyards which is sometimes a rather perilous thing to do and the most interesting one at the bottom option four which employs passive downdraft cooling which we've done a lot of work on and we've actually built one of these for the, at the school of Slavonic and east european studies that you see and this is the first ever uh, 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 image of passive downdraft cooling happening with, in, in smoke tests. And uh, we also uh, have a huge interest in new build hospitals and uh, with NIHR funded us to try and invent a new build hospital that, uh, that met the new department, not so new now, Department of Health um, targets and very interestingly we, we didn't manage to do it which hugely amused the Director of State at the Department of Health but we'd like to keep this work going. On these diagrams in a modern hospital, particularly the PFI hospitals, the, uh, every space would be black because uh, the more intense the tone on the plan, the more mechanical the environment. But if you go through all of the type spaces very carefully and look at the environmental requirements, you see that actually 70% of the building could theoretically in a temperate climate be naturally driven and that has enormous uh, implications for its, for its performance. So, very quickly, the conclusions. Well, we, we know that now that through refurbishment, we can seriously improve the internal uh, conditions. We can make buildings much more resilient. It's relatively cheap, cheaper than you'd think. It's quick. It's much quicker than knocking down buildings and, and rebuilding them. Uh, and we hope that there will be a big program of, uh, of re-engineering the NHS of state. And what's rather surprising is that along with the adaptation strategy, there's a very real mitigation benefit because in all of the options, we very dramatically reduce the energy consumption. And the important thing, certainly perhaps I'm talking to my own profession here, is that the, it's not the disappointing um, uh, alternative to rebuild an existing building rather than knock it down and start again. You can make uh, extraordinary buildings out of that. And do look at our film. Thanks very much. Any thoughts or